Welcome to the Inner Wonder. I'm Alex and I'm your host. As a kid, I used to play competitive games of tennis in local and national tournaments. I loved playing the sport, but competing at tournaments at such a young age implied the inevitable reality of facing a defeat so early on in your life. In those moments of youth despair, I recall my dad quoting various aspects of the poem If by Rudyard Kipling in an effort to advise me how to grow. It's a rather short poem. Every line though is important and still today adds value to my learning. It's a poem written in 1895 and it's essentially a father's advice to his son on how to become a mature, responsible and honorable man. It's structured as a series of conditional statements outlining various scenarios and suggesting the ideal way to respond to them. The poem was written 125 years ago, and a lot has changed. I would rephrase the backstory today as the conditions by which an individual can live a virtuous life. Although so many years have passed by and we have experienced so many changes, those conditions live forever and age like a fine wine. I outline here my top 5 conditions as described in the poem. Condition 1. If you can trust yourself when everyone doubts you, but make allowance for their doubting too. In this part of the poem, the poet makes a point that it's important to believe in yourself and your ideas, to trust the process and your skills that one day you will make it. Nonetheless, the condition underlines that it's important to listen to the criticism you receive and to spend time thinking and considering about what you've been told. Being able to critically receive feedback and assess it and act rationally upon it is one of the greatest qualities an individual has. Condition 2. If you can dream and not make dreams your master. If you can think and not make thoughts your aim. I make a reference to this specific quote in many aspects of my life. It's my favorite condition. To dream is important. Without dreamers and dreams, we would be stuck in a cycle of risk aversion where change would not be dynamic. On the other hand, a person shall not exist in the land of dreams. Rather, to make dreams a reality, an individual should not be obsessed with the dream the person sets, but also focused on acting in the now. As per thoughts, according to many ancient Greek philosophers, see Socrates or Aristoteles, a person who thinks is a person who lives a fulfilled life. Thus, there's no question as to the value critical thinking brings to an individual, but always with limits, and setting those limits is fundamental. Condition 3. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. This is a very important condition, which took me some time to understand and clarify. A person's attitude is tested on crucial moments, and these moments seem to be the peaks of highs and lows. The condition asks the individual to remain who they truly are in those moments, and thus not to be filled with overconfidence in times of great success, nor with low confidence in times of great defeats. Both triumphs and disasters are temporary states for all of us, and are not said to last. Thus, the attitude one has during those times will greatly impact the next stage, post the peaks. What do you think, thinkers, of this? We're often told that we are tested on the difficult moments. Those are the moments that shape us, and those are the moments we need to control and overcome. But what about the good moments? What about the moments where everything works well? Our attitude is key even in those moments. Condition four, and lose, and start again at your beginnings, and never breathe a word about your loss. The fourth condition offers two main insights. The first is the common saying of not giving up. I recall a nice quote from Les Brown who said, when you fall, try to land on your back, because if you can look up, you can get up. This follows a similar trajectory, implying that a defeat is unavoidable, though what matters most is that you set up your engine and start again. The second insight, however, is the one that offers this unique perspective of never breathing a word about that defeat. It's common for people to focus a lot of their energy on bad things that have happened in the past, and to be unproductive when talking and going over and over those defeats. The condition asks the individual to accept the outcome as it is, understand that it's part of the game we call life, and to move on with it. Condition 5. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, 
or walk with kings nor lose the common touch. To be humble, pragmatic and to have self-awareness, the condition asks the reader to be true to themselves and not to be affected or lose their brain depending on who they are surrounded by. A virtuous person is the one who has searched deep into the self and so will not be affected by such situations or the environment. It's a person that makes a position, not a position that makes the person, is a quote based on similar philosophy. Oftentimes we observe people losing their mind because they spend time with celebrities or because they have been given a position of power. We see that often to ourselves when we get a promotion or we're given responsibilities. This final condition asks from us to keep being us, the person we are, despite our surroundings or the positions we hold. So let me repeat those conditions. If you can trust yourself when everyone doubts you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can dream and not make dreams your master. If you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostors just the same. And lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings nor lose the common touch. Ending this episode, I realize how this poem has shaped my life and the way I think. In living a fulfilled life, we strive to always improve and develop. But in doing so, we are destined to be faced with challenges, defeats, disappointments, but also moments of success. Only through experiencing those, we can become something more, a version of ourselves better than the one we have today. So, to that kid who just lost another match in the youth tennis tournament, I owe some words from this poem that have shaped me growing up. And so, hold on. When there's nothing in you except the will which says, hold on. Until our minds meet again, enjoy the inner wonder you're creating. Thanks everybody. See you next episode.